Let's not forget about the other branch of statistics. Let's ask ourselves, what are Bayesian autoregressive models? Of course, if we're talking about autoregressive models, you should remind yourselves of that with the convenient video link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Basic premise of the autoregressive model. You can forecast a series based solely on the past values in the series. We call these lags. When it comes to a Bayesian approach to autoregressive models, we just have a different set of assumptions. Basically, we have to assume some notion of a distribution around the parameters we're trying to estimate. So just like every other Bayesian regression approach, that's it. Wow, that was easy. Wait, you don't know about Bayesian statistics? Oh boy, mm, where to begin? Well, the Reverend Thomas Bayes was born in England in 1701 to a Presbyterian minister. Bayes grew up to be a Presbyterian minister himself, as well as a philosopher and statistician. Busy dude. He was the creator of Bayes' theorem, even though it wasn't actually published until after his death. Funny story. Even though people commonly use this photo for Thomas Bayes, thank you, Wikipedia, which was supposedly used in a book in 1936, it is actually doubtful this is really him. No earlier portrait actually exists. <laughs> if only they had cell phones and selfies back then. Anyway, back to the model. So here is the short, short version of the differences between frequentists and Bayesians in statistics. Let's imagine you wanted to estimate something like the population mean, mu, like the average height of people worldwide. Well, the frequentist basically assumes that true population value isn't moving. A Bayesian, on the other hand, thinks that is silly. Of course the population mean is changing. Then they assume how it is changing, basically what distribution it follows. A frequentist thinks this is silly. They would say it's more reasonable to assume something you don't know doesn't move than to assume you know how that unknown thing moves. If you want to see some fireworks, just walk into a statistics department meeting and ask, hey, does the population parameter stay fixed or does it move? <laughs> Sit back with some popcorn and enjoy the show. Basically, a Bayesian takes their prior belief, called the prior distribution, combines it with data, and then updates their belief based on that combination to what is called the posterior distribution. But how do we estimate the parameters from our model? Through something we call Markov chain Monte Carlo techniques. And no, we're not talking about gambling here. Monte Carlo is the practice of estimating the properties of a distribution by examining random samples from the distribution. For example, instead of finding the mean of a normal distribution by directly calculating it from the distribution's equations, a Monte Carlo approach would be to draw a large number of random samples from a normal distribution, calculate the sample mean of those samples, and now it becomes much easier than working with complicated equations. The Markov chain property of MCMC is the idea that the random samples are generated by a special sequential process. Each random sample is used as a stepping stone, if you will, to generate the next random sample, hence the word chain. A special property of that chain is that while each new sample depends on the one before it, they do not depend on any samples before the previous one. This is the Markov property. The chart you see on the right is an example of an MCMC -MC process used to estimate the value of phi from our regression equation. The chart on the left is the first 50 simulations of that same process, so we can zoom in and see that chain a little bit closer. Got it? Good. So going back to our original point, Bayesian autoregressive models are basically just like regular AR models, but with some additional assumptions. You would need to assume some kind of distribution around your data easy to estimate since you have data, as well as the parameters in your model, as well as the model variance. Oh, one more distribution. When you forecast values from a Bayesian AR model, you actually get a distribution of forecast for each time point. It's kind of neat. It allows for some built-in idea of variation of your forecasts. For the value we choose, we typically look at some measure of central tendency, like mean or median. Of course, you can extend this to the multivariate space as well. If you're wondering about vector AR models, you can click on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Whew, that was more complicated than expected. <laughs> you know, it's always fun because people ask whether I'm a frequentist or a Bayesian. It's easy. I'm a, oh goodness, look at the time. Oh, so what are Bayesian autoregressive models? Those are Bayesian autoregressive models in under five minutes. <laughs>